Okay, so next up we have Mr. Michael Eric Dyson, who uh, everybody and their mama got opinions on the Drake and Kendrick, um, you know, beef, salvo, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> verbal altercation, you know, beef on wax. Everybody's been talking about it. Michael Eric Dyson is the latest to give his thoughts on what he felt about the situation. Uh, he joined none other than none other than Stephen A. Smith on Stephen A. Smith's YouTube show to give his thoughts on how he felt about this situation. And, um, you know, uh, he, he basically said that he did not like the way Kendrick called Drake's blackness into question. He thinks that calling a black person's blackness into question is a problematic, um, you know, behavior that we engage in unhealthily and it needs to come to an end. That's essentially what he thinks about all of this. Uh, so he did not like that particular aspect of Kendrick's strategy. Uh, so to provide some context, this says Kendrick Lamar criticized by Michael Eric Dyson for questioning Drake's blackness. Kendrick Lamar may have been deemed by many as the victor in his feud with Drake, but he has drawn criticism from Michael Eric Dyson for the way he went about dismantling the sixth god. The cultural critic has made it clear that he is not happy that Drizzy's racial identity was used against him in the rap battle, which spawned a string of, of explosive diss tracks, but now appears to have fizzled out. Speaking to Stephen A. Smith over the weekend, Dyson discussed his column in the Philadelphia Citizen in which he offered his thoughts on the beef. Dyson wrote in the article, the astonishing and deflating speed with which Drake was tarred and feathered as inauthentically black says less about him and more about the reactionary nativism of cults of pure identity that police the boundaries of blackness like a rogue and racist cop. He added, in a single spurious stroke of Kendrick's claustrophobic blackness, Drake went from a brilliant embodiment of rap's genius, that's a bit much, sir, <laughs> um, to a cultural carpetbagger who must prove that he deserves to be called black when a white supremacist culture sees him as little else. During his chat with Smith, Dyson expanded on his comments saying, I'm pissed that Drake gets dismissed off the scene when he's been Drake for 15 years and you act like you didn't know that. Now he's not really black. Challenging his racial identity and saying he's a culture vulture when he's a black man. He's from Canada. He ain't real. Idris Elba is from the UK. People still love him on the wire. So why is it that being from outside of our nationality raises suspicions about Drake? He continued, Kendrick Lamar is a brilliant rapper and a formidable foe. But so is Drake, and what he's done to expand the horizon of hip-hop is underestimated, even artistically. We have to stop this narrow, punishing, pernicious, limited viewpoint about blackness. Dyson further defended Drake, whose father is black and mother is Jewish, by comparing him to former President Barack Obama, who also comes from a mixed-race background. Um, Kendrick Lamar took numerous shots at Drizzy's uh, ethnicity throughout their hotly contested feud, including on Euphoria, where he rapped. I ain't even hate when you say the word N word and we don't want to hear you say the N word no more. Uh, he also called the Toronto native a colonizer on his chart topping this song, not like us. So there is a link here to that interview that Michael Eric Dyson did with Stephen A. Smith. Um, it is a bit long, so I was not, you know, able to kind of, you know, bracket out a particular clip but you can go ahead and hit that link for yourself and you can see the whole interview all relevant links to all of our topics will be in the description of this video uh no different than any other video but uh there you have it so michael eric dyson he joins people like azalea banks and charlemagne coming to the defense of drake in the aftermath of this whole beef situation uh and he just wasn't in favor of kendrick calling drake's blackness into question as a tactic in the beef uh, and overall, he sees a problem with the way black people call other black people's blackness into question. So uh, what do you make of uh, Mr. Dyson's comments about Drake and Kendrick? Uh, I feel like this is all PR. I don't know. I don't know who paid him. I don't know what rock he crawled from out of. To, to let, let's let's let's, let, let's assume let's assume that he believes that that he that he that he believes that and he said it himself i can't assume that because he doesn't believe that and he has no his, 
his opinion on this is no different than DJ Vlad's opinion. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna assume that this guy really felt this way because who can it if if he sat there and said, Oh, you can't qualify, the issue about this has nothing to do about race. As crazy as that sounds, and this was what makes him sound crazy. Because if he understood what Kendrick was really trying to get at, <clears throat> even the darkest of a dark man would not be a part of the culture. So it has nothing to do about race. It has everything to do about what you stand for and what you identify with. I don't seen Jesse Jackson live his whole life selling people out. I don't seen Al Sharpton do it his whole life selling people out. So you can be as, as, as dark as you want to be and you can sell people out. You're not part of the culture if you do. So Drake just so happened to be mixed. And so why? But Kendrick, why? But, but Kendrick in, in some of the songs did see yeah, how many how many times you have to say how many times you have to say the n-word to feel like you're black enough trying to right. appropriate trying to appropriate something that he's not a part of nowhere in there did he say how he said how many times do you have to do that so you can feel like you're black enough he didn't nowhere in there did he say i don't think you're black enough well the implication is that most people are going to take that as that's an implication they, that's, that's how they believe. that's how most people want to take it well, that's why. Well, that's why. That's why I pose that to you because most people are going to read into that as Kendrick believes that there is a big part of this that is inauthentic due to Drake not being black enough to be that way. So that's how most people are going to read that, that's whether right. whether it's implied or not. So Dyson is one of those individuals who took that in that yeah, way, and that's fine. and that's all it is. But my thing is, is that's fine. If, if, if this guy wants to ch uh, champion himself as an intellect and somebody that really knows what's going on, I feel like he should be more well informed about the situation at hand and see for what he's actually trying to get at. And that's not what he was trying to get at. Most people are going to take it that way, but most people got lost. There's a lot of things that were were written one way and meant to be taken one way and a whole bunch of people took it another way. Uh, that's one thing about art is that uh, and so many entendres and things that Kendrick was doing in there is you could take it how you want to take it. But as far as I'm concerned, the 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 way that uh, Drake was, um, this has nothing to do with race. So he, so Eric, so Mr. Eric Dyson here can play this card because his job as this air quote intellect is to sit here and to interject and uh, put a narrative out there that we should respect because he's this air quote intellectual. And I'm here to tell you that this guy's a bought and paid for a clown who's crawling up out of the woodworks like an Azalea Banks or a Charlemagne, like you said. These people, there's, there's paid people run up Rory. There's paid Drake stands out there, academics that run out there and start championing back, uh, back in whatever Drake did or saying whatever Kendrick did was too far and it wasn't good for the thing. You know, we, we cover Quest Love. And his him and his Jimmy Fallon alliances, you don't sit there at, uh, and start banging drums with Jimmy Fallon if you're not a part of that cohort and that group. So one thing that um, Quest Love had to do was unmute and say that, hey, I don't stand with this either. Yeah, make your alliance and tell him that you don't stand for this type of stuff. And so the same thing going for this Eric Dyson clown. And he'll sit here and unmute and try to tell me how to think since he's the black intellect. See, they, they have these black intellects that they put up there as these people that we should respect the neil degrasse tyson's and this clown you know amongst others and they'll put them up there and because we don't have so many we'll take that these little guys as the guys that are the authorities we should be listening to instead of the people at universities at hbcus that really know what's going on so these these bought and paid for clowns and actors this wasn't a genuine take in my opinion at all he sat there with stephen a snitch another clown and sat there on his platform and started running his mouth and just to put a narrative out there. So sorry, I don't agree with this uh, because it wasn't about race, it was all about culture. And there's somebody out there, skin darker than Kendrick, that'll sell us out. And I'll tell him, much like Kendrick would tell him, that he's not a part of the culture either. So uh, those are my thoughts on that. But what are your thoughts on Mr. Uh, Dyson and uh, how, he, how he gets down? <laughs> Well, I need a damn. I need one of those machines with the with that with that flame sound on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. 
<laughs> Shoot, oh, man. man. Yeah, you roasted these people. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, what did he do? I thought he was oh, just hey, a astronaut hey, guy. Hey, look, look him up, bro. You'll find out. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I hear most of that. Um, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, when you, in my opinion, and I'm not defending Michael Eric Dyson, I'm just saying, I understand why he, why people would interpret Kendrick's comments as a way to call somebody's blackness into question. Because he literally said, how many times do you have to say the N-word to be black enough? And there is a persistent theme throughout modern black American history of one's blackness giving them the card or license to be able to use that word. So when you put those two things together from a historical perspective, there's a bit of context behind why one would interpret those comments that way now if you strip away the history of it i hear what you're saying but i think most people are going to take those com are going to take that from kendrick as a way as 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 him calling drake's blackness into question and i don't think it's unreasonable for i don't think it's so unreasonable or beyond the pale for someone to interpret it that way even if that's yeah. not what kendrick's intention was mm -hmm. um but here's where i jump off the ship I agree with you that it wasn't about race. It was about culture. And 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 the thing with this is just to kind of comment on like race real quick, because I'm getting real tired of even doing this. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just exhausted with this stuff. But uh, race is a cultural construct more than it's ever been really about skin color. Um, it's why you can have somebody like Patrick Mahomes be considered black, but Russell Wilson isn't. Like <laughs> Russell Wilson is forever considered not black enough because of the way that he acts and how we and how we perceive that based upon the constructs of culture that we adhere to. Whereas a person like Patrick Mahomes, who is biracial as hell, is largely viewed as a black man. And I think he even identifies himself as black. And you look at some of these other people, I think we even mentioned, uh, we mentioned, who was that? Um, what's her face? The chick who has no accountability, Doja Cat. Oh. You know, Doja Cat, wants to chastise the audience at her show, the white people in her audience at her show for using the N-word when she's like half white. And she puts the N-word in her music and no one listens to her song, but like 16 and 17 year old white girls and maybe some other people. So like, it's weird to even hear you use those comments, but you can say that if you have an understanding that race is actually less about your skin hue and it's more about a cultural construct. So because it is a cultural construct, an individual such as Drake can believe that he is as black as ever and use as many N-words as he wants. And what you're calling into question at that point isn't his blackness or lack thereof because it's a cultural construct, but rather his authenticity. And I think what Kendrick was getting at was a lack of authenticity on Drake's part. Correct. I don't really think it was ever about race either. I think it was about his perceived inauthenticity. And so it just so happened that Drake's perceived inauthenticity was rooted in racial dynamics. Correct. But otherwise, the two things aren't really, there's no causation here. At the most, all you can do is suggest correlation. But at the most, it's correlation. It's really about a perceived lack of authenticity. But what an individual like Dyson is going to be able to conveniently do is connect the dots and make it a racial conversation because that's his... That's his place in this ecosystem, man. People like him and Umar Johnson, they are always going to be able to find the undercurrent of race in anything. And if you're smart and articulate enough, you can make it make sense. But at the end of the day, if the original, if the originator of the message is themselves informed and educated, which Kendrick is, and his intent was not necessarily to call someone's blackness into question per se, but to call into question their um, authenticity, albeit that authenticity being rooted in race, then you're kind of connecting dots that don't really exist. So, you know, it's kind of twofold for me because I halfway understand why somebody would interpret those kinds of remarks on Kendrick's part that way. But I also think that it's connecting unconnected dots otherwise, because really this is about authenticity and it's less about race. Uh, and I kind of hear where you're coming from. I think even the blackest of black rappers 
um, if 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 they sort of give off an air of inauthenticity about it, people are going to call that out. Uh, whether they choose to invoke race when they're calling out said inauthenticity, you know, that's up to the person who's making the claims of inauthenticity. But moreover, this is about uh, inauthenticity with respect to uh, culture, you know, as far as I can tell. Uh, so, you know, I don't like that. You know, uh, it's a form of race baiting to me, um, in it my is. opinion. It is. Um, it's a form of race baiting to get people riled up to start talking about blackness or lack thereof. It's the age old thing. It goes all the way back to when I was in middle school and people were saying that I wasn't black just because I got good grades in school. It's ridiculous. It's very, it's, it's, it's extreme low hanging fruit. And while I do agree with him on the surface, that that is a pernicious behavior that black people need to let go of. We also need to call it out when it's actually being applied. And in this sense, I don't really think it was being applied. I think it was more about Drake's lack of authenticity as a human as an artist and how he carries that into his music and what he contributes to the world so um but this is what this is the ploy of people like dyson is to kind of make it about that uh and it's incumbent upon people who hear those comments to understand the nuance of that and not believe it just because he's a smart guy who's saying it yeah and because again so he said that in the Euphoria song. And um the song after that, the 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 um the Meet the Graham song, or well not well one of the well a couple songs after that and Meet the Grams, he said he's talking to his son. So at this point, uh, Drake had his child with a non-black woman. And in here, Kendrick, while he's talking to um uh, aided on. Adonis, all right. <laughs> he says, uh, never code switch. Rather, uh, whether right or wrong, you a black man. So while he's talking to his son, who's yet to develop into uh, a cornball sellout, he's trying to talk to him, let him know, hey, you're a black man. So how can you acknowledge his son as a black man who has less blackness in him, if you want, if you want to play the genetics game, than Drake? But he's addressing him as a black man. But then, but he's he's telling Drake that you're acting you're acting like you're trying to be black, basically. How many times do you have to say the N word to feel like you you're a part of it? This is your own personal stuff, and that's why in the song he said, you know, this is a this is a battle with yourself, bro. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not here saying I'm I'm saying what you need to be seeing, bro. This is a mirror up to your life. If Dyson was really into this beef as he should be, if he's going to sit here and talk on it and speak on it, then he should know what Kendrick's talking about. But yeah, he grabbed the low hanging fruit and wanted to race bait and throw a narrative out there on a platform that's always narrative based. Stephen A is a narrative based machine. And so, yeah, man, he got a call up from his boy. Hey, man, I got a check coming in. What's that? Hey, man, I got to take up a drink. Oh, what? Are you? Hey, man, how much they cut you? And then he comes swoop, he come swooping in. So um, no, nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not jiving with this. These uh, talking points, this race baiting stuff, because this wasn't like race like that. You want to talk about proxy wars, all this other stuff? He was. It was rigmarole. Uh, Drake's been doing this for 15 years. It's like, but what are you talking about? So I, I, I couldn't get with that hype piece. Um, talking about something, he wrote an article. I, I said I had to watch that thing. I had to watch. I had to watch the clip. Uh, that interview to see where he was coming from because, you know, for him to be calling out Kendrick like that, I wanted to make sure I was informed. But now nah, he went down the, the clown rabbit hole as I thought he would. So as I mentioned, he he uh, Kendrick is calling uh, Drake's own son a black man. So it's nowhere in there that, that he can't acknowledge that Drake ain't black enough. So uh, argument debunked, uh, Mr. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever you're Dyson, get out of here. Vacuum yourself out of here, man. I got time for this guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, I, I, like I said before, I think that this was uh, a matter of authenticity. You yeah. know, um, I don't think, uh, like, let's say, hypothetically speaking, this would never happen because Kendrick actually likes this person. But hypothetically speaking, if this was a, a beef between Kendrick and Eminem, um, 
whatever tactic Kendrick would be utilizing in order to get the upper hand on Eminem, I don't think cultural values would be one of them because he views Eminem as someone who's authentic, albeit a white person in a black dominant field. You know, it's hard to really play that card when you really do believe that somebody is living out their true authentic self. And I just think that Kendrick looks at Drake as somebody who's inauthentic. Uh, and it just so happens that his inauthenticity is rooted in creating content that puts him in a certain light that is not actually real uh, in a field that is dominated by said black people. So some of these various elements are going to come into play. But like I said, I think that there are dots that are otherwise unconnected. But a person who's smart enough and articulate enough can make them sound like they ought to be connected. And I think that that's what he was attempting to do with this. But it just makes me increasingly uncomfortable because, like, what are we doing here? At the end of the day, you know, uh, it was something that he called. And, and, you know, even if he did want to look, and I'm not a fan of calling another black person's blackness into question. I don't mind saying somebody is inauthentic. But I don't like the whole black or lack thereof thing because, at the, like I said before, it's not really a skin color thing. It's a cultural construct, and it's been that way for decades. Um, but even if you want to go down the rabbit hole of doing that, if someone perceives that to be an issue and they want to play that up within the context of a rap beef, then so be it. Um, why, extrapolate to, why extrapolate that to this overarching societal observation about negative, pernicious black behaviors? Um, that's going to get people riled up and arguing and fussing and fighting over something that otherwise is just a conversation about rap beefs. Even if you think that they, you know, reached a level of being inappropriate in certain facets. But, you know, that's just my two cents on that. I just think at the end of the day, if you are an inauthentic person, and an authentic person can smell that, um, they're going to call it out. They're going to call it out. Uh, and, if, and you can say that it's rooted in race if you want, but I think that it was a correlation more so than it's an aspect of causation. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, um, I'm not a fan of this take, Mr. Dyson. Uh, try again, sir. Uh, Team Kendrick. Uh, Kendrick went wrong. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there seems to be a lot of uh, people who are trying to find clever ways to either make Drake the winner in this or make him the victim. Yeah. Uh, I'm noticing that, you know, it, it's different people, you know, they're kind of coming out randomly and I don't know if they just want to be a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian, but you know, there's just, you know, a lot of the, there's a lot of that going on. I'm noticing over the last like week and a half or so where, okay, maybe you don't think he won, but he was a victim. And then there's others who are saying, nah, he won. And it's just weird to me. Uh, it, it reeks of agenda. You're going to see more of it, trust me. So, I mean, th I mean, they, they got this guy out of, out of you know, this guy crawled out of nowhere. So next it'll be Boyce Watkins or uh, somebody else, man. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, guys, let us know in the comment section, though, man. What are you guys' thoughts here? Do you feel as though Kendrick crossed the line calling Drake's blackness into question? Or do you feel like Mr. Dyson was missing the point? Let's know in the comment section. All right. I got to look up what Neil deGrasse Ta Tyson has done. I, I was unaware nah, that he was a leader. Hey, man, man, I'm I'm an alternative guy, man. So I don't <laughs> I don't like I don't like his uh his status quo takes on science. So I'll just say that. So it, he ain't do nothing wrong. He just he's just upholding. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he's upholding shenanigans in my opinion. Oh, okay. Well, that's different then. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You just you you disagree with his science. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shouts out Neil deGrasse Tyson, man. We I'm like I'm like life. Terrence. I'm like Terrence Howard, bro. I, I don't I don't unlock the <laughs> flower of life. I don't unlock. The <laughs> uh, hey, you saw that podcast, bro? The Terrence Howard one with um Joe Rogan, bro. You gotta watch. I it, ain't bro. seen that. I don't be. I don't mess with Joe Rogan like that. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs>